In this video, we're going to show you an effective way to paint eyes and add flesh tones to faces. This is part of our painting tutorial series that we're inviting anyone to come in and use for our Knights of the Game Table Painting Challenge. If you want to learn how you can jump in on the challenge, get your miniatures painted fast and easy, and even get access to the Knights of the Game Table membership for an entire month, then click the link in the description of this video and sign up. Now let's paint some eyes. So we put the base uh, golden flesh paint on our model. Now we're going to really spruce things up and add a finer detail to it. Um, first thing we're going to start with is the most intimidating part when it comes to faces is the eyes. So um, we don't start with um, white paint for the eyes. Actually, a lot of people make the mistake of using white paint. We're actually going to use a palette witch flesh, which is a lighter, um, pastier, um, it's like almost like an off-white color because, I mean, think about it. When you look at eyes, are they really like beet white? That would be really weird to look at someone's eyes and they're like bleach white. So this is more of a like fleshy white, so it's perfect for eyes. And um, it's really simple. All you're going to do is collect a little bit of it, um, put it on your wet palette. You don't need a lot and um, get a nice fine detail brush. This one is a size zero brush and get a little bit, and this is like painting surgery here. You're gonna hold it, grip the model with all five fingers, and really um, just go across. So it's really eyes are making a cross. You're gonna get in there and um, start with the easiest one and gently guide it to where you're just going horizontally across the eyes. So that's one, and then that's two. And there you have it. There are your pupils. You can literally leave it like that, give them the undertaker look where his eyes are rolled back in his head and people would be impressed with that alone. But next we're gonna do the next part of the cross, which is adding the actual pupil. For that, we're gonna use Avedon Black, Abaddon Black, for how some people call it. And um, you're just gonna apply some of that on your wet palette. Again, get your size zero brush because this is very fine detail painting here. And you're going to, um, get a nice tip on your brush, get it ready, and put a little bit of um, the black on there. And we crossed one way up. Now we're gonna cross, or we crossed, we painted the eye itself across. Now we're going to do the black up. So we're basically making a crisscross with this. And it's a really simple technique for eyes. It's not a even pattern crisscross, but it's just a really good way to get level and equal eyes that look good. So here we're gonna go down and again, we're gonna line it up and just go down and, um, you know, sometimes it won't stick. So that's one of the, the issues with eye painting, but um, you wanna be careful. It's better to have it not stick and go back and make sure it's really good than slap too much paint on there and mess up the whole eye. So we did down on one eye and now we're gonna go just a nice quick downstroke on the other and, um, there you have it. There's there's a set of eyes that look real. I mean, the pasty, like off-white flesh color and the black itself just makes it look really good. But that's not all. We're gonna take this face to the next level because you wanna learn how to paint really well and we're gonna show you how to do it easy. So you're gonna get a Cadian flesh tone and that's gonna be the next layer of paint for your face. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna add blush and a little bit of warmth to the face. So that way, um, when people see the model, it, it really stands out and they'll be ultra impressed with your face painting. I mean, and this is so easy. You're seeing here, all we're doing is getting a nice little detail brush and applying it in the spots where light would shine and where warmth would shine. So when you look at a face, just think of like where are the hot places, right? It's usually the cheek, it's usually the bridge, the tip of the nose, it's usually the forehead, um, maybe like the tip of the chin, but those like, bright places where light would hit and where warmth would come off. So that's that's really how you wanna gauge your face painting. Um, next, we're gonna do uh, like a Reekland flesh shade and um, we're gonna apply that to a little bit of the face as well and just give it that last bit of depth. So um, we're taking the Reekland flesh shade and we're filling in some of those last bits of um, crevices and stuff and so combine the depth coloring with the Reekland Flesh Shade and the, the shading with the highlighting that we just did with the um, Cadian Flesh Tone, the face is gonna come out looking amazing. I can't wait for you to see this final picture. 
Um, but that's not all. We're gonna add one more layer to this face, and that's just gonna be that pasty off-white that we used for the eyes. We're gonna use it one last time to just add a final highlight to it and give it that white glow that um, you know makes the face really shine and gives warmth to those places that need it. Um, again, nice and steady, and it's, it's not hard. What we wanna teach here is how to get your miniatures looking really good, really fast, and really easy. And as you can see, all of this has just been a step-by-step -step process of applying piece after piece, and it all comes down to that grayscale. And once you get the colors down, it's just another form of grayscaling where you're applying different shades and different tones and different highlights. So um, we did that with the face, and um, we're just gonna add a little bit more to those warmer places, um, kind of like a light blend of the, um, the white and the Cadian flesh tone, the palette witch flesh, and um, just give a little bit of a final touch up to the face, get those last places, and um, because we went over with the Reeklin flesh shade, it added a little bit of a um, darker tone to it, so it's just kind of brightening up those areas again and touching up those black pieces. You know, Space Marines have those those dots in the side of their heads that, um, you know, they get once they become a Space Marine. So we're just gonna add a little more detail with that, go back with the black. And um, at this point, we're just getting the fine details in place. And um, the, the bulk of the work is pretty much over with. Some people would call this quits and they'd be done, but we're gonna show you how to take this model to the next level and we're gonna do it step by step. So. As we go through, we touch up, you know, the black pieces on this face. We touch up um, the eyes. We touch up, you know, the last little bits to give it that warmth and that that glow that a face gets. Just going back and forth um, with those those highlighting colors, the palette witch flesh, the Cadian flesh tone. Then we're also going to show you how to touch up the rest of the model and apply really cool highlights to the metal. So we're gonna start with the bright armor, which was the Rune Fang steel, and um, just touch up, you know, some of those other pieces along like the black dots, give it that metallic look. So he doesn't just have black dots on his face that look like um, fleas. So he has those metal plugs that are black in his face. We wanna give him that metallic look. Um, now we're gonna go through and we're gonna highlight edge the rest of this guy. And um, by the end of this, you're gonna, you're gonna see just how easy it is to apply these finer details. This video lesson here um, of this entire series is the one that elevates your model to the next level. So if you haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, go back and watch them because this video here is pretty much what ties it all together in terms of making your model look incredible. And this is, this is the real deal and you wanna make sure you're caught up with it. So we're gonna start with the Liberator Gold, which is like a whiter, um, pastier type of gold. You can see it there on the wet palette. The, the Retributor armor is darker, it's more bold. This one is whiter. Um, it's definitely a lighter, more white type of gold. And what we're gonna do is just like how we did with the sword, where we did the bronze to the uh, Liberator to the Rune Fang, or the Lead Belcher, I mean, we're gonna do the same thing with the gold pieces here in terms of just edge highlighting. So we're gonna take that Liberator Gold and we're just gonna edge highlight where we applied that Retributor Armor and um, get a nice little um, layer of gold shine across you know, all the gold pieces where this is. We start with the shield, just get those nice strokes down, um, handle the model with care. You can see here we're holding it with all five fingers. We're applying it carefully, use one finger to steady it, another finger to paint. And it, it really is incredible if you take the time to do these extra steps. These are the extra steps that make models look incredible. These are the extra steps that the pros do that um, just make their models stand out. Up until this point, it's been a lot of filling in. It's been a lot of make sure there's no white spot here. There's been a few techniques here and there that have, you know, that are really helpful in terms of making things pop and adding a more element and more depth to it. But these steps here, the edge highlighting, knowing how to apply these colors and, um, putting on the, the right way is what's gonna really take your model to the next level. So we finished up the shield, now we're gonna move on to the, the breastplate and the um, gold pieces that are hanging down from his robe and we're still using that Liberator Gold. We're still on that first layer of edge highlighting with the gold. Um, we're moving on to the sword hilt now and again, we're gonna go where the light shines. We're doing the down strokes. We're not, we're not trying to kill the shadows that we've worked so hard to create and cast 
through this multi-layer grayscale and light scale that we've created, we're, we're hitting the tops of the model where we want the shine, where we want the light to glow most, and most importantly, where we wanna draw attention. Um, up here at the shoulder pad, we're gonna you know make it really shine so we draw attention to that beautiful face that we put so much work into and those those eyes that we, we put that work into. It's, it's so important that you understand where the shiny stuff is, is where people are gonna look. Where at the end of the day, we have fish brains, right? And snake brains. So we like to look where the shiny stuff is. And when you do these edge highlighting, these edge highlighting techniques, you are pointing people to where the shiny stuff is. You are, you are telling them, hey, look here. This is the piece of the model I want you to see. And so as we get to the tops of these shoulder pads, we're gonna definitely add more of a shine to it than we did with like the bottom of the sword hilt or um, the, the bottom of the sword or you know the, the bottom of the shield. We want people to look up and see that face. Now, the next piece we're gonna do is the red Kindle flame. And um, that's the next um, paint we're gonna use. It's like an orangey red paint. It's actually a dry paint and it makes for really good edge highlighting. Um, because it's a dry paint, it's, it's a little easier to work with um, you can kind of control how much goes on your brush a little easier. And um, we're just gonna take some of it, we're gonna put it on our wet palette here, and um, we're gonna start um, just touching up, again, the next layer of the metal shine. So here we're gonna, you know, get, you know, start with the edge of the shield and um, get, you know, the other pieces where the, the non-metallic armor, as some would call it, the red, which is metal, but it's not, it's a non-metallic paint. We wanna give that that metal look and that metal glow. So that's essentially what we're doing here with this style of edge highlighting. Now we're using a number two brush. You may see that it's a little bigger than the, like the finer detail brush we use for the face painting and the eyeballs. And that's because we're literally just fanning it along the edge. You can see how meticulously and, and carefully we're holding the model. And really we're just rubbing the edge of the brush to the edge of the model. And this is what gives it those really cool lines that make it stand out. This is what gives it those, those lines that define it, that give it that, that extra step of definition that so many people aren't willing to give their models. And what this really comes down to is knowing the steps, which we're giving you here, and then knowing how fast and easy it really is if you set the time aside for it. So whether you're you know making a point to paint once a week or you try and paint every day, by going through these step-by-step -step processes, you're gonna see just how quickly you knock out your models and how fast um, your painting is going to improve and how impressed people are gonna be with the models you're putting on the table. So, and it all comes down to these little steps. It's like I said, this video is the catalyst of all the other videos. If you haven't watched any of the other videos in the series, you need to because this is where everything comes full circle and your model is gonna look incredible. So we finished up our edge highlighting with the, um, the red Kindle flame. Now we're gonna do some white edge highlighting. So we'll pull out our white paint again. And this is the final, the final technique, the final step with the edge highlighting. And we're gonna add another layer to that red Kindle flame, but only in the extra shiny spots, only in the, the parts we really wanna draw attention to. Notice we're just hitting that last ring of highlighting and edge that's um, nearby the face. Because at the end of the day, that's really what we wanna draw people to. We wanna draw people to the face and we, would, we wanna draw them to this um, shield that has so much detail that you know the Space Marine is literally holding in front of our faces here. So we want people to look at the Space Marine's face and it's apparent that the Space Marine wants people to see the shield. So by contrast, by definition, the attention is gonna to go to the shield as much as the face and we get to control where that goes by directing where the light shines. So. You use these edge highlighting techniques and you'll see the model starts to really stand out. It starts to pop. It starts to um, get these little fine details that make it look good and it's gonna draw attention to those um, final last pieces. And at the end of the day, it's, it's just keeping those downstrokes and knowing where to go. Now, this part's really cool because um, the sword itself is kind of a hard one to edge highlight. The tips aren't that hard, but this middle piece here, this is a tough one because it's, it's so flat yet so pointed. So you want it to have that definition of, you know, the shiny steel edge, but you also don't want to get the entire side of the sword. So, and voila, you have the shield looking good. You have the sword looking good. You have lines drawing attention to the face. Next, we're gonna move to the base. 
And that concludes this lesson on how to put flesh tones and eyes on your models. The next thing we're going to do is tackle that base that he's standing on. And we're going to show you some really cool ways that you can spruce up your bases and have them looking great. So if you want to learn more, then go ahead and go on to the next video in this series. But if you haven't already, I want to invite you to join our Knights at the Game Table Painting Challenge. There's a link in the description of this video, and all you have to do is click it and register to join our challenge. Once you're in the challenge, all you have to do is go through our series of tutorials and paint a miniature from start to finish using the techniques we show you in this series. If you do that, we will give you a free Knights of the Game Table membership for an entire month. That's access to all the lessons, all the tutorials, and even our private group where you can ask questions about how to improve your 40K game and get exclusive painting tips from pro painters we have in there. So if that sounds like something you'd like to try out for free, then go ahead and do our Knights of the Game Table painting challenge. If you're already in the challenge, then I will see you in the next video.